All right, hey guys, we are here at the Barrymore Theater in uh, New York City for number two of our two shows of the day. We're seeing Ben's visit. Yeah, you know, all we know, pretty much basic synopsis, it's about this orchestra that is, a police orchestra that is stuck at a bus station in Israel. Uh, I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> we're not sure about the rest of it. Um, this one has been said by many as one of the front runners for uh, Tony for Best Musical this year. Yeah. So we're gonna go see what it's all about. This delightfully offbeat story, set in a town that is way off the beaten path, a band of musicians arrive lost and out of the blue, under the spell of the desert sky and with beautiful music perfuming the air. The band brings the town to life in unexpected and tantalizing ways, proving that even the briefest visit can stay with you forever. Uh, this show was a lot of fun. What was your first? You know, I actually really enjoyed several of the actors. Um, John Cariani, he, he was in Something Rotten. We saw him in that show. Yeah. His character was so endearing. I don't know what the, what it was about <laughs> him. Like, he was just this cute dad and he just cared about his wife. And I don't know. He was just great. And the other person I really loved, and I wish that he was in more of it, was Adam Cantor. We've seen him in a few other shows. And I, the whole show, I was like waiting to see him and I wanted to see more of him. Yep. He was great. Yeah, you really connect to Adam Cantor's character. It's funny um, how impactful his role in the show is, but how little he is in the show. It's strange. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, so I think that my first for the band's visit was kind of um, the overall feel of the show. Um, I really liked how simple things were with the set. I really liked um, how much they did with the set. I felt like every single time that you were, you know, into a different part of the city or into a different room or a different home or things like that, I think they did really well with moving you from one place to the other. It made me feel really cinematic. It was a lot like when, in a movie when you jump between locations and that kind of thing. You forget kind of that you're on a stage and you zero in on it. Um, but it was simple too. There wasn't um, anything out of place. Everything that was there really helped you be in the place that you were. And so I really liked that set. And then the last thing that I would call out with the set and the, kind of the experience of it all would be the color theory. Um, there's a lot of really good color in this show um, from the band's uniforms to, you know, each character really had its own, you know, vibe with their color and that kind of thing. There's a lot of elements from this show that were really cohesive and it was a lot like a movie thing. So I really liked that overall experience. You know, my second was, I really enjoyed the music. It was very simple, but, but it was beautiful. Like the lead woman had this really pretty song that she sang in the, um, I can't remember which act it was in now. But then the, the other act. thing, the other thing that I really enjoyed was having all those characters on stage actually playing their instrument. You know, this has been a thing, uh, you know, I don't know. I remember the first time I saw it was in Sweeney Todd with Patti Lapone, and she was playing a tuba on stage. Like that was so different to me and I love <laughs> that it still feels new and relevant having these characters on the stage and they were very talented. Like I wish that they stayed up there longer at the end playing yeah. all their music. Like I wanted to hear them more because I loved the style of the music they were playing and Definitely. they were so talented. Definitely. Um, for me, I think my second one would be the story. Um, this story is not an easy story to follow in a lot of ways. Um, or better, you follow it, but then it kind of feels like you're not sure where it goes or where it ends. Um, I connected to this story. It felt a lot like an indie film to me in the story sense as well. They kind of walk you through a series of events that happen. And then just like in real life, sometimes things happen and they're meaningful to the people who are they're happening to, but then it's over, they've gotta go home. At first I was a little bit, uh, you know, I wondered, they built this story and then it kind of just ends, you know? And then I started to think about it in process and as we talked it out, I kind of really liked that they were able to be as daring as they were with that. I think too often the challenge is to really connect everything back and to make sure it all aligns and fits and it's wrapped in a neat little bow. And I really liked that they told the story here and they let it be real and they let it feel, you know, 
maybe not finished or maybe not done or um, maybe it just kind of ended or cut off. And I think a lot of times real life situations are just like that. Yeah. You know, it's funny because that was actually one of my weaknesses is I really, I didn't connect to the story. You know, I had to actually talk to Bobby after the show and be like, okay, so what was that even about? Like, <laughs> it was it was very slow moving, very slow paced. It's not your typical musical that has a big stop the show and do a big tap dance number. It didn't have a lot of those normal things you see in a lot of shows. And that's okay. I just didn't really connect with it personally. Um, I think my opportunity for it is also centered around the story. I think they build this really wonderful, beautiful story and you really kind of wonder what happens next and you really wonder what's going to happen and you wonder, you know, what happened to those characters and what are they doing and what's next for them and um, what about this band? Did they make it here and did they make it there? And, and to not give away the whole story, but I think my biggest opportunity was is that it took some time to think it through and to process it. And I'm not sure that I got it right when I processed it, that kind of thing. Um, but it definitely made me think and it definitely made me wonder and it definitely made me process more than other shows that are sometimes wrapped in a neat little bow. So um, definitely a yeah. different vibe. What do you think of this one? It was nominated for a lot of different things for musical yeah. and a bunch, I mean, a ton of Tonys. And you know, the thing, you know, you read a lot of those articles coming out of the New York press and it's like, who should win, who will win? And you know, I actually, from everything I'm reading, I think this actually might win Best Musical. Yep. I don't think it should personally, but that's just me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, I too think it's going to win Best Musical. For me, it's something different than from a lot of the things that are nominated in this category. And I think a lot of times that that attracts, you know, Tony voters or however the politics are with it. But I do think that this one, if it's not going to win Best Musical, it's definitely a front runner for it. And uh, I think that a lot of it has to do with that. It. It's just a different vibe. A lot of the shows this season are kind of, you know, uh, a recognizable commodity or something else like that and this one kind of stands alone in that space and I could see it winning for that. This is one that although it was a little different for me I'm really glad that we got to go to it and really glad that we got to cross it off our list. Yeah. And we kind of sort of ended up stalking Tony Shalhoub. Indirectly, Indirectly, not on purpose. It's funny, we we were really sad because he wasn't playing the lead character when we were there that yep. night. He was on a leave I think probably to film a TV show. But we ran into him on one of our next trips yeah three two or three times oh yeah my gosh. so we went yeah. to new york uh one week had a couple weeks in between and went back to finish up the as many shows as we could see this season and it was funny we went to uh carousel and then while we were at carousel we were just standing in line on the way in and there tony shaluba was and then the same thing at my fair lady and then i think we ran into him just walking on the street one yeah. of the times too i was like this guy's gonna think we were stalking him my favorite was though like bobby reached over and shook his hand and i said congrats on your tony knob and i just loved being able to have that little small moment so this this is show number two in our countdown to the Tonys. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and drop us a like or follow along. We're going to have a couple more throughout. A couple, when I say a couple, I mean like 12. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of shows that we got the chance to go see, and we're going to count down through as we uh, move closer and closer to the Tonys. Um, I think next up is going to be Sweeney Todd. Uh, really immersive one, so oh, stay tuned for stay that. Stay tuned, yes.